Okay, now we have a request from the general public to address the council. Uh, we have more people than we normally do. Um, our policy is that we, we allow five individuals to speak prior to the council session so we don't back up our council session. Uh, you have an option if you're signed up to speak uh, when we're done our regular session, which in this case is not going to be very long. It's a relatively short agenda, or you can be first on the list next week. So I'm going to call the first five names. You have uh, two minutes. And the first person is Larry Stafford. Followed by Diana Forrester and Jocelyn Rout. Just so you're prepared. Well, good morning. I did not expect to be going first. But, <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to first express my congratulations, but also sympathy for council member Oriada. you know i myself being a father with a wife who is also in politics i know how rough it can be to go through uh, a pregnancy as well as you know being involved in politics at the same time like it's it's very difficult work and how stressful that can be so yeah my <laughs> deepest regrets that you've had to endure some of the things uh, that you've had to, and I'm glad that, you know, you're still keeping your spirits up and you're still here, ready to do the people's work. So I wanted to say that first and foremost, but I, I got to speak about what happened last week, of course, and I, I'm hoping that there's a change of heart today because honestly, I was very disappointed uh, in some last week, some who I expected better from in terms of what they said, just because I, I saw it for what it was. It was a naked attempt to leverage a woman's pregnancy for political convenience and political expedience. That was very disappointing. And I would say also, as Democrats, all on this council, we know what's going on with the attack on the right to vote all across our country, attacks on early voting, access, attacks on vote by mail, and all forms of voting access, and the Supreme Court taking away our voting rights. So why would you take it upon yourself to do anything that could even look remotely like attacking the right of this particular council member to be able to vote remotely when we've had this battle all across our country? And so I hope that that decision has changed today, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, let's keep, please keep decorum. I'm required to say that under the rules. Um, Diana Forster, Jocelyn um, Rout. Diana Forster, president of the Metro Washington Labor Council. Hello. This is my first time testifying before the Prince George County Council. You guys look amazing. Um, I am happy to be here today. I'm going to use my two minutes very wisely just to make a few points so as the president of metro washington labor council and someone who stands up for workers rights and labor rights and someone who stands beside many of you council members and call some of you all friends i believe you did not know the decision that you all were making and weren't fully aware of the decision you're making so we're here actually today to help you revisit the decision and ask that you reconsider your vote and make sure that only does council member christy or oriata have the right to vote during her time of childbirth but council members that are sick and council members that are being with a loved one have are extended the option to vote because we're extending the option for them to participate but we know that if participation is not the full act of democracy voting is act of democracy so i'm also here to deliver a letter on behalf of the metro washington council with a number of our unions 1199 united here unite united workers ATU 689, AFGE, District 14, the Baltimore, D.C. Metro Building Trades, CASA, IBW 26, the Metro, my council, the um, La Una Plumbers, Local 5, Prince George's County Education Association, Steamfitter 602, UFCW 400, and Unite Here 25, asking that you all reconsider the position that you take and that you extend this right to vote and participate virtually 
Um, and also look at the counties around you. My fellow council member, my council member, Ward 7, um, Vincent Gray, has been able to vote in a wheelchair and work from home virtually. So we're just asking that the letter that was sent out yesterday that say that they were, we're with our sister, that we put some actions behind those words and we reconsider the vote. Um, and I'll leave the letter here to, for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Forster. Uh, Jocelyn Rout, Phyllis Wright, and then last is Jana Parker, last until later. Hello, good morning, county council members. I was elected to amplify the voices of Ward 1 residents who reside in the town of Bladensburg in October of 2019 as a mother of four children who, two who have special needs, and honestly, having another child was not in my plans as a newly elected council member. In the spring of 2021, God blessed me with the opportunity to be pregnant while serving my community as an elected leader. The road of being pregnant during a pandemic in my late 30s was not an easy road, but I'm thankful for the support of my friends, families, and even some of you who supported me during my time of a high-risk pregnancy, just like Council Member Krista Orieda. Unfortunately, the County Council and their stance of not allowing County Council women to participate and represent their constituents' voices may deter women like me from even considering to pursue the office of County Council Member, which should not be the case because thinking about my right to vote to represent the constituents I serve. I cons we need to come together to look at the impact of our current stance. If we know better, we will do better. And we now have the ab ability to rewrite our wrongs and do what's best for all people. Council members, I consider all of you on this dais before me, friends and elected partners who have a like-minded mindset to put the people first. I stand before you today speaking in support of a virtual voting provision for those who are unable to appear in person to care for themselves or a family member who's vulnerable. We should not politicize living our lives and supporting those who need us the most. Humanistically, I urge each of you to reach back to the reason why you got into this thing called politics and do the right thing. If your loved one was sick or even if you were recovering some, for something like COVID and someone restricted your ability to vote virtually, shame on those people. Please do the right thing today. Thank you. Phyllis Wright. Followed by Jana Parker. Good morning, Council. <clears throat> I'm here today because I am a registered voter and my vote matters. When this came before me in reference to Krista Orietta, I, I was shocked because we all are human and we all have needs and we all have to support our loved ones. Now, I know sometimes we get to say things out of anger that we wish we can take back because we are human and we make mistakes. But I hope today that we would change this and this vote would be overturned. And I hope that you have a good pregnancy. And I know you've had a lot of issues. One more thing I want to say. Our school system, we must do better by our children. I have been asking for metal detectors in all of our schools for so long. And it took an incident for a young child to lose her life to find out the next day that we can put the system in that school. Please find the money and put it in all of our schools. We need metal detectors in each and every one of our school systems. Now getting back to you all, we put you all here to do a job to represent us as the voters. And we need you guys to work together. United we stand, divided we fall. We don't need to issue all of our dirty lines in the public. Sometimes we need to go behind each other and talk. You all are grown people and not children. We need you all to communicate, to respect, and acknowledge each and every one of you. And, and listen, I'm a voter, and I'm going to come out and speak. I put you in office to do the job that the people want, and we expect for you all to do just that. We don't expect you all to disrespect one another. You might not like one another. We all disagree, each and every one of us. But we put you all here to do a job and to represent the people, and that's what we expect. So this is my second time ever speaking before you all, and I hope that we all can. Today, 
change that vote because don't don't click the thing. Give me one one more second, please. Change change, change that vote because um, one day it can knock on your door. I've had eight major surgeries and my loved ones had to take care of me. So I want you all to understand this needs to be changed today. And one more thing. Metal detectors in all of our schools in Prince George's County. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, last for now, Jana Parker. Um, so I struggled with this testimony because many of you know that Crystal is one of my best friends. And I wanted to make sure that I spoke um, from a constituent perspective because I feel like if I speak from a best friend perspective, I wouldn't be able to finish my time. Um, the press release that y'all put out, Hawkins, Fisher, Harrison, Franklin, um, am I missing anyone? Uh, Hawkins, whatever. That was very misleading. Crystal would not be able to vote. She would not be able to represent her district. And the two at-large members were not specifically voted to represent the needs of her district. It was very gaslighting for two women, particularly one that was a mother, and one just by her identity will be high risk whenever she chooses to have a child to say, oh, we support mothers, but you're not allowed to vote. That's not supporting mothers. You do not support mothers by telling them when and how and if they can come back to vote and do their job. You support mothers by having reasonable accommodations for them to do their job when they ask them to. That is so inappropriate. The other part about this, Franklin, is that you have a daughter. You have children. You sit up here and talk about fatherhood, but you sat up here and voted against a mother. That is not supporting the family. Hawkins, you have a daughter, and you told this high-risk pregnancy woman that she was making a victim of herself. You sat up here and said on the dais that the only reason why you were voting this way is so you could break up a power block from December. But you didn't have a problem when you were in the power block and you purposefully went out of your way to block Olson, Orieva, and Blagay from being in their districts. You didn't have a problem when you were in power, but you got a problem when they're in power. That is a low thing. Ms. Parker. And there is no good about it. Okay. I will also say this. I understand. Okay. I'm constituent. That was wrong. Like, I thought a lot, I thought a lot more of, of you as a person. Both of you. I, I understand we don't have the same politics, but I thought more of you as a person. And that's a very Pharisee, Sadducee type thing to do. To sit up here and do performative works. I'm gonna finish my statement. To do performative works to do performative works, to do performative things, to say you pray before each vote and then publicly attack a pregnant woman. You don't need to speak to me or come up to me in the public. Don't do it. Okay, Ms. Parker, we, uh, we're done. Okay, we're gonna move on to our regular agenda, but I wanna do two things. Uh, number one, just to be clear, under our rules, this, we're talking about a rule issue and a rule change. It's in committee. It's not in the council. It's not on the agenda today, so there cannot be a revote today. I'm, I'm sorry about that. However, I know Ms. Uriata wants to say something, and then Ms. Watson wants to say something, and I think that's, I'd like to be the only things that are said, and we'll move on with our agenda. Um, so we, we will hopefully bring this up next Tuesday. Ms. Uriata, do you want to say go? Um, I, I do have a statement to make, but I want to make sure I give the opportunity for all the speakers to, to speak today. But the chair asked me to make sure that I let everyone know that signed up, um, that you'll still have the opportunity to speak. Uh, we're just going to try our best to get through the agenda. Um, and I just thank everyone for taking their time to be here today and taking their time um, to wait patiently um, after we get the agenda. But I'll delay my comments to make sure that the, com the community first has a chance to speak. Ms. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to have an opportunity. Uh, I know it was brought forward that we made a statement and I wanted to make sure that everyone heard what our statement was. Uh, and it says, Council Members Hawkins, Franklin, Fisher, Harrison, and Watson stand together in support of maternal health and virtual access. 
Tuesday, September 12th, the Prince George's County Council failed to favorably recommend Council Resolution 78-2023. The vote led to an important discussion around maternal health and virtual voting. Maternal health is a continuum of health care from pregnancy to childbirth to post-childbirth care. As parents, parental figures, and community leaders, we strongly believe that a woman's health during pregnancy, childbirth, and postnatal care is critical as it has a major impact on the infant's health and overall well-being. It is so important for a new mother to take the time post-childbirth to heal and bond with her newborn. To that end, we also understand the delicate balance between work and family responsibilities and the priority to uphold the vow we took as legislators to serve the residents of Prince George's County. As each district within the county is supported by three council members, the district representative, and the at-large members, the interests and issues of Councilmanic District 7 residents will continue to be heard and supported. We look forward to celebrating our colleague, Crystal member Ori Council Member Oriata and her baby, as the birth of a child is life's greatest blessing to a mother, a father, a family, and the community. We pray Council Member Oriata has a safe deliver delivery and a healthy baby. We do support allowing virtual access according to our current rules and procedures to any council member, including council member Oriata. We disagreed with the council chair and the council majority with passing any new legislation allowing virtual participation as our rules already provide this ability in specific and certain circumstances. The chair has access to these rules and procedures and may utilize them when appropriate. As members of the county council, it is our sincere hope that we will come together as genuinely, a genuinely united body to focus on improving the quality of life for all residents of Prince George's County. And in the spirit of compromise and knowing this division is not something the county needs right now, we will support the resolution with amendments with the, with the hopes that we can all work together without vilifying each other publicly. Thank you. Oh, oh go ahead. Ms. Oriata, last word. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I, because I was going to hold my comments um, to make sure that the community had the opportunity to speak. Um, but I read the original statement um, that was written. And there's a, a few things that I want to say um, publicly. Um, the original statement made it very clear that there was not the support for the resolution made it very clear that there was a continued stance of that I could participate by um, attending a meeting, being able to speak at a meeting, but knowing that I wouldn't have the right to vote at the meeting. And when I saw the statement, I was also very upset by the statement. Because at that time, no council member, even the ones that had disrespected me on the days, had yet to speak nor apologize for their behavior. And I have to say this publicly, that without a vote change, without changing your vote, what I can say clearly is you do not care about maternal health. You do not care about my health and well being. You do not care about my unborn child. And what I will not tolerate, if you don't know anything else about me, is using my family to clean up your mess. So, how dare you write a statement that blatantly, blatantly pretends? to care about me when you do not and you don't have to but don't pretend it to clean up your image this is not about me this is about the opportunity for every single woman that has the opportunity to sit in this seat after me and making sure they have the opportunity to vote to make sure they have the opportunity to see themselves in policy, making sure they see the opportunity for themselves to be a legislator. And I was appalled by being called a victim. There is nothing about me that is a victim. I've never been one and never will be one. And to say on this dais 
that because legislators have not had the opportunity to have better circumstances and situations, we should not do better. The time in which they said a woman like me should give birth in a field and go back to pick cotton is over. So we are going to do better and we're going to demand better as a community, period. And I hope that people do the right thing now after your um, community has spoken over 500 signatures from uh, Psi Epsilon Omega, AKA's Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha Sorority Incorporated sent 500 signatures appalled by the vote that happened here today. So yeah, I do hope the women on this council change their vote. I do hope the men that are married, the men that have daughters, the men on this council that could stand in such an ignorant, polarizing position have heard loud and clearly from the community and do the right thing. But you were forced to do the right thing. And we and the voters will not forget that. Okay. All right. I don't want to go down this road. I don't want to go down this road. Yeah, I just I'm going to move on to public. What Ms. Watson proposed. That's all. I think it got lost. <laughs> Unless you want to clarify. As I heard the clarification, Mr. Hold on. Maybe you should clarify. Maybe you should. As I heard the clarification from Ms. Watson, I didn't hear everything she said, but there will be a revote next week, and we will have a unanimous support for the resolution. Is that what I heard? Could Correct. We want to see, we want to we want to have a compromise conversation on a on right. a bill we, next week. Okay. So, then, we okay so then, then we all can on. support. Then we move on, Tom. Then we move on. Now, t time out, folks. This is getting out of control. I don't like it. Okay. Um, there's not only agenda. We, we had people speak because there's a public participation, and I, as a courtesy, I let Ms. Oriad and Ms. Watson speak. But okay. This is not on the agenda, so we're not going to deal with it any further other than folks who want to stay and speak at the end of the agenda you can do that uh, because that's your right on public participation i'm going to be one of the first up is belinda queen welcome ms queen i signed up for three minutes at 10 o'clock on your website i don't know two minutes so I, my speech is three minutes just to let y'all know because i practice it okay here we go Hello, everybody. Get that out the way. That's a couple of seconds. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. I heard many say it's not about moms or pregnant moms, council member, or writer. The 19th Amendment of Women's Rights is so important, it has constantly been made better for each generation and better accommodation for those who need. I'm not going to dwell on women's rights or ADA accommodation today because I know others will. I want to use my time talking about seasons. Seasons change like spring, summer, winter, and fall for our good. One thing for sure, if a district represent don't represent the people in that district, they will surely vote them out. District reps hold more of a favorable vote for representing their constituent when they voted for that district. When I see any residents and, and have been witnessing is unfortunate frustration of some of you council members feeling that your votes and things that you are bringing to the table has been voted down. It's that season. I remember before the 2023 election, the majority block didn't include council member Ivory and everything that she voted was voted down. Now the people have voted for change and she is part of that change that people apparently want. To hear about a majority block vote sounds like the use of political violence. Last I remember, you all ran as Democrats, a person who believe and uphold governance by the people who advocate on rules by the majority. This is a season of the majority block who has been said to be a council working for the people. Find a way to unite for the good of all constituents. But remember as I close, Ecclesian 3, 1, and 8, and I'm not going to read it all, but to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun, a time to get and a time to lose, and a time of peace. Let's not hold malice in the meantime of other season, but find ways to work together for we the people do the right thing and remember your oath and reprimand fairly to the best of your ability, even toward each other. It's the politics of give and take. Sometimes you have to give and sometimes you have to take. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Queen. Uh, next is Tanya Sweat. 
is she still with us? And following Tanya Sweat, we have uh, Valerie uh, Blackman and Joseph, Josephine Parker Morning. Good afternoon, Chair Denoga, members of the council. I am Tanya Sweat, a resident of District 9, Akakeek, Maryland. And when I came earlier today, I had a different speech. I had different comments. But after what has happened, what I've witnessed, I want to say two things. One, thank you to the self-declared minority bloc for changing your minds. Secondly, I want to say the people won. But it saddens me that the people had to come in and protest and demand our elected officials to do the right thing by us, by us, because it's not about you. As a mother, as a wife, as a working public servant who've served my country twice under duress of a high risk pregnancy. First, while I was in uniform in the United States Air Force right after 9-11, I was the chief prosecutor at Andrews Air Force Base and had to switch to a warfighter mode and advise generals and war planners for 12 hours a day while carrying my firstborn. 10 years later, while I was a managing director for the federal government, a financial regulator, as I helped our country navigate through the worst financial crisis we had seen since the Great Depression, I understand, I sympathize with Council Member Oriata. I know what it's like to serve your duty while you have personal stressors in your life. Nobody should be asked to do that, but it is what it is. So I thank you all for recognizing the need to take care of us and to take care of you. I'll look forward to your vote next week. And if I have concerns about your amendments, I'll put my comments in writing. Thank you, Ms. Sweat. Valerie Blackman, followed by Josephine Parker Morning. Not here? Okay. <clears throat> After Valerie will be Joe Ellis. Good afternoon. My name is Valerie Blackman, a.k.a. Nia 2X, uh, representing the Honorable Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton's organization, the National Action Network, and I'm also representing Her Excellency Dr. E. Fay Williams, who is head of the Dick Gregory Society. And I'm here to address the council members that opposed Ms. Orinada and uh, to put you on notice because apparently you don't know. You've lost your humanity. And the reason I say you don't know is because you have no empathy. You have no compassion. You have no concern, no regard for a mother-to-be, first-time pregnancy, for an unborn baby who is not even on the planet. Because as the mother goes through anything, whether it's positive or negative, so does the child that hasn't come here. And here we are representing a majority black uh, neighborhood, if you will. Not only have you lost your humanity, you've lost your memory of remembering when a black woman was dragged on from the plantation having a baby in the morning have you forgot and that same morning she was duty bound dragged out to work sun up to sun down in the hot sun uh, carrying on all day and all night you've lost your humanity not feeling anything for your colleague how can you represent your colleague like that and expect we the voters to not Understand if you can't respect your colleague and an unborn child, how do you qualify to represent us, the voters, who have given you the power that you perceive you have, but on the real, we are the power. 
We voted you in. We have the power to vote you out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blackman. So Joe or Lisa Ellis, not here. Leah Anderson. Leah Anderson. Coney, Seriana Portilla. Followed by Kiana Johnson. And then Carlita Kirksey. Uh, good morning. Well, good afternoon now, I think. Mr. Chair, members of the council, um, for the record, my name is Connie Serrano Portillo. I sit on the council over in Edmondson in District 5. Um, and I just wanted to come here because um, I was extremely disappointed over this body last week. Um, full disclosure, I recently worked for Council Member Cristoriata, and I want to share how exactly I found out about her pregnancy. Um, we were coming back from a school visit when I had to pull over for her to puke outside of my car. Um, and I don't mean to put your business out there, but I just want to make that point just to say that it didn't get easier from then. I received calls and text messages from members of this body and this administration um, about Council Member Riata constantly having to puke in the back of this room, to go to the hospital, to, live in the, to leave in the middle of the day, um, to go get checked because this pregnancy hasn't been easy for her. And so I had a front row seat to that, and that is why I'm here today. Um, last week, the resolution was voided against under the justification that because others were able to perform their duties under difficult circumstances, the expectation is that this body should also be able to do the same. The lack of empathy that this body showed last week is extremely concerning. And this body saying no to this resolution is basically saying that we too as residents in this county don't matter. Um, in the state of Maryland, black women represent 54% of pregnancy related deaths due to complications. When this body went to recess in July, there were only 78 beds that were being occupied due to COVID cases in Prince George's County. Now that you have returned, there's nearly 300. So the message that this is an exception only for one member of this body, I resent that because this could be an exception for every single one of you when it's needed. And our residents need this exemption for you to be able to vote and, and speak on behalf of us when we need you to. So I hope that when this goes to committee, there are, I've seen the legislation, I really don't see the need for any amendments, and I hope that this body does the right thing, not just for yourselves, but for our residents who put you here and vote for this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Coney. Uh, Kiana Johnson. She's on her way. She's on her way? We'll hold her. Uh, Carlita Kirksey, followed by Victoria Lamard or Lamond, and Ellen Lyons. Hello. Hi, my name is Carlita Kirksey, and I stand with Miss Crystal Orieta. Um, I have, I guess, like a couple things to say. I didn't have a speech prepared. Um, I want you guys to take into account the Americans with Disabilities Act and Miss Oriata having a temporary disability with her being pregnant. I want you guys to actually take account for all those things. Um, when you're talking about lawsuits that can be brought upon you guys. Um, Got to think, think deeper than that. Um, the other thing is I volunteer at the men's shelter at Prince George's House men's shelter that's on um, that's in Miss Oriata's district in District 7 and without her vote it definitely affects the residents that that resides there um, I would appreciate it if you guys um, reconsider the um, the vote that you did have and think about the other residents that may not have the voice to come and stand upon you guys to um, to speak about the needs that they have so that's all I have to say thank you Thank you. Uh, Victoria Lamond? Leonard. Leonard. Oh, your handwriting is worse than mine. Yeah, sorry, my handwriting <laughs> was really bad. I was writing on an angle. Uh, Victoria Leonard, representing the Labor's International Union of North America. And thank you for having me here. Um, I hope that everyone will reconsider their, their vote against the uh, remote voting next week. And in watching the discussion and the drama, it just reminded me of the redistricting 
fiasco that occurred last council period and this group can do better than that. So I ask you all to vote and allow remote voting for council member Oriata or anybody else who needs a reasonable accommodation. It's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. Ellen Lyons. That would be me. Yeah. Your favorite person. <laughs> a district one resident come all the way yeah, down here. Are. It's a good day. Yes, it's a good day. <laughs> Laura residents, good afternoon all. My name is Ellen Lyons, and I'm a senior citizen of the Laura residents, um, his favorite place. I didn't want to speak, and I don't have a speak prepared, but when I read what had happened, to what was happening to Crystal, I just couldn't keep my big mouth shut because there's an exception to every rule. And when I first heard of Chris, all I could think about back in my day, 1951, when I was born and my mom was a sharecropper. If a mule die, if I'm no, if a man die, we hire another one. If a mule die, we buy another. That's exactly where my mind went. This is a human being with feelings and most of all a woman, a pregnant woman. How can you do such? Where is your humanity? We are one. And how can we ever get unity if we can't get no oneness? We need each other. And I ask each of all of you who didn't vote to reconsider your vote. Think of humanity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Lyons. Carletta L Lundy. Carletta, Carletta. Louise Wiseman. Linda Thornton Thomas. No. Millie Hall, I saw Millie Hall. Followed by Yvonne Corney and Clyde Har Hargraves. Good evening, Council. My name is Millie Hall, and I and my family, we support CR 78-2023 for the purpose of amending rules of procedure for the county council. Three years, three years ago, everything turned around and shut down. All of our lives was changed forever, COVID-19. It forced us to go remote. The federal government, the state, the local government, all of the governments had to adapt. We need all of you guys. We need all of you guys to work together. We need you guys, please remember the people personal feelings, lay them aside. We are looking at you guys to do the right thing. You have a huge responsibility. Please don't take it lightly. We, our children, our grandchildren are looking at you. Please do the right thing. And I left my notes. We are all affected by your actions, one way or another. So I urge you, I plead to you, my council chair, District 4, Watson, I was at large, and our council member Fisher and Harrison, please dig deep in your hearts and reconsider supporting CR 17 2023. We thank you for the opportunity and please reconsider your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Do we have Yvonne Corney? Oh, yes. And then Clyde Hargraves. Har Good afternoon. I'm going to make this short. When I saw yesterday, I just found out about this yesterday. I didn't see the news last week. But when I saw yesterday the report on Channel 4, and I looked at Council Member Oriata, and she was holding back tears. And I'm going to try to get through this without holding back tears because I'm very emotional. I was very upset about that. When I listened to your comments, Councilman Hawkins, and the way you talked to her, and the things you said to her, I was shocked. Because I had much, much, much respect for you. And what you said to her was mean, it was condescending, and it was disrespectful. And I said, this is not the man that came to our apartments and said a senior called him who he knew and said, you're in a position to help people. How you going to do it? Don't forget where you came from. I said, I guess he forgot. Yes. So what I want to say to you is this. 
and this might be a harsh statement, but I empathize with her. This lady has been there for us, and she's not even our district representative. She runs out whenever she don't want to hear what she want to hear, but nevertheless, it's all right. But what I want to say is this, and this might be a very difficult statement to receive, but those of you who are voting against this to shut this lady down, I really believe it has a lot to do with the Rent Stabilization Act, and it maybe have a lot to do with other things. But what I say, I equate you with the slave masters yeah. who brought us over here and took to, with nothing, and took the nothing that we had and took that. And now the little that we have now, you're going to take that. I see no different than you than the slave masters that brought us over here in the beginning. Do the right thing by this woman. Because those of you who understand the universe, yes. you know this Martin stuff, I understand Jesus. He's watching. And don't I've learned in my 70 years of le living, you don't get away with nothing. You will reap what you sow. And for those of you in the new stuff, because I'm old as dirt, karma. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Hargraves, followed by Josephine Swan. Josephine with us? Yeah, here. Very good. My name is Clyde Hargraves. I'm a bishop in the church. And I'm here today because of the fact that evidently some of us have lost uh, the mindset of what democracy really means to all of us. Therefore, after experiencing uh, overwhelming <clears throat> increase in my rent for the month and to find out just where Prince George's County is in terms of rent stabilization or shall we say rent control, Prince George's County has no business without rental control and it needs to be taken care of and it is very very painful at the age of 84 and being a disabled veteran to have to experience things like this at a time like this however because of my studies I do know and recognize that uh, in the beginning of uh, yesteryear, back in the day of slavery, the slave master did not allow slaves to talk to each other. And all I want to say to those of us who are here today, what you've done is damaging to the real view and concept of democracy. It not only hurts the individual that you dealt with, so vigorously, but all of us, because of the fact that when you hurt one, you hurt all. Even if we're not fully competent or aware of it, but I want you to know, on one of the days that we had a chance to discuss this for the media, Ms. Oriata was the only council person there who was really not from our area up in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. But I want you to know this as I make readiness to go to my seat, whatever you do, just remember huh, the word is out. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And don't forget you will reap what you sow. Okay, uh, Sylvester Miller Scott and then Josephine Swan. Greetings, I am Sinester, not Sylvester. Oh, I see. Uh, Very good. Bad reading. Good handwriting, bad reading. <laughs> okay, greetings to Chairman, Vice, Council Member at Large, Mr. Franklin and Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I am Sinestra Miller Scott. I reside at Marwood Senior Residence Apartments in Upper Marlboro. And as you can see, I come with other residents from the Upper Marlboro Senior Apartments. And we have now come to support 
uh, uh, Sister Oriana, a lot has been said. I want to share with you almost from day one, or maybe weeks one, Council Member Oriana has been with Marwood Senior Apartments. And even when we had the media and we were demonstrating regarding the rent, she was there with us. And I, we honor her today because she held the police back from locking us up. You know, and because we were we were seniors over there in wheelchairs, but we just wanted to stand up for our rights and our justice. We want to thank you. We support you and we love you. And I just want to remind you something that I learned that I didn't know the difference in is empathy and sympathy. And I learned empathy for council member at large, Calvin Hawkins. Hey. <laughs> Josephine. Followed by, uh, looks like Casey. Mm. Josephine Swan. I live at Marwood in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. I'm here to support Crystal. Um, I guess, Mr. Hawkins, I'll start with you. I have a problem. This summer, I've been trying to get in touch with you since June. Your uh, assistant is so sweet. She has helped me. I still haven't got the answer, but... You were busy with your wife because you had problems at home. So what is the difference in yes. your problems yes, yes. and oh, Crystal? Uh, I mean, is it because she's a woman? My father in the 50s thought it was terrible that women couldn't vote. He had to go to vote. He told mom, I got to go to vote. vote. It hurt him. But I feel like we're going back in the 50s again. This is crazy. Mr. Hawkins, Mel Franklin, some more we're not going to forget. Next year, election year, we're going to be out there, and you're going to know it. Yes. I expect somebody to do right by yes. Crystal. She was the one who came down. She wasn't so busy she couldn't come to the park, or she had a problem with her baby, She carrying a baby. She came. So I want it done right by her. And I know, you know, some of you are not going to get that vote. You don't deserve it. You are a disgrace to this county council. This county yes. council, can, yes. PG yes. County, yes. cannot move forward wow. because we got these people dragging their feet or not here. They're busy. Yeah, well, you know what? We're going to be busy now on that campaign thing. Yes. Don't mess with the seniors. You went too far. Yes. And don't forget it. Where else, yes. Christy? Okay, I, I'm having a little trouble with the handwriting here. Casey? Do we have a Casey Mun hmm? Munene? I apologize. Followed by Janet Demerit. I should know better. It was a nice try. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> it was a terrible try. It's okay. Um, I initially came to see the swearing in for Mr. Abraham. So, in my official capacity as mayor of the town of Chevrolet, though he's gone, I'd like to thank him for helping Chevrolet move forward with getting the permitting for the William Ely Public Works building. And congratulations to him. Now, for my unofficial capacity, I wanted to offer a reminder and some insight. As the Labor Party's leader, Jacinda Ardern served as New Zealand's Prime Minister from 2017 to 2021. Some of her key achievements are well known. After a long, lone gunman fired at, at two mosques and killed 51 people, she swiftly tightened New Zealand's firearms laws and announced a ban on military-style weapons. New Zealand's population of 5 million people also recorded fewer than 2,500 deaths due to COVID-19. So what Ms. Arden has taught us is that she was able to do all of that while breastfeeding at the days. So we know that women, mothers, get things done. We should be careful not to send messages or create optics that say otherwise. Now, my son, many of you have met him, was due October 28, 2017. My last day at work was October 28, 2017. I worked until my due date, and I worked in a toxic work environment where it was clear people did not care about me or my unborn child. After 32 hours of unmedicated labor, all of it was worth it. But when we took my son to learn that he was autistic, it took the head of John Hopkins neurodiversity team to explain the science to me so that I understood it wasn't my fault that he was autistic. 
I know how hard it be, could be to work in an environment where you are at odds with people. In fact, I just recently had people protesting me in the town of Chevrolet. So please understand that I don't make any judgments here. I just hope that you all would make decisions that allow you to sleep well at night. I don't see how last week's decisions reflect that. Lastly, I'll say there's always at least three sides to every story, but I want to leave you with this. There's a great series on Amazon named Harlem. I love it. And in it, there's a young lady that says, when they go low, we go basement. Last week, we went past the basement, folks. We went to the actual bottom of the, the building. I'm glad to hear that you all are willing to reconsider. I look forward to listening to the amendments. And let's get up from the basement and move on from here. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Janet to Mayor. Is Janet still with us? She left. Okay, then. I was going Count Johnson is back and is our last speaker. Yes, thank you. Okay. You can I'm wrap it up, some, Ms. Johnson. I gotta go give me some lunch. I'm hungry. Um, but I did want to make sure that I come and I step up and I stand up for Crystal. Um, Crystal has been there um, since my return home from incarceration in 2017 when I started organizing. Um, and Crystal was there. Crystal's always been there. And the issues that the issues that I fight about each and every day, Crystal has always made sure that she has come to community events and that she has stood up for what is right. And so what I'm asking for today, oh, and I'm Kiana, the founder and executive director of Life After Release, and I'm also a co-conductor with Harriet's Wildest Dreams. I'm sure you know both organizations well. And so I'm speaking in both of those capacities here today um, and letting you all know that I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I have to come here. I try not to um, come into these spaces. I know I've been called the prophet problem child that calls people out online and all these different things. And I'm really trying my best to just be like so diplomatic. It's so hard for me. So please work with me. But this is very simple. Um, I'm a mother of two. My youngest son goes to Morgan. Um, my oldest son um, is in, also in college. And I was separated from them, right? Um, being a black mother, a single black mother is one of the hardest jobs that we have on the planet Earth. And if you have not had the opportunity to be a parent, I'm going to be a proxy and let you know that that is one of the hardest things that we have to do. And so I'm going to stand here with you, Crystal, um, and, and, and on this issue, not even just with Crystal, right? Because there's, fo there's folks on this council who I consider and respect. Right. And so I'm I'm coming out to do what is right, not necessarily a popularity contest of, of, you know, just the person I'm here for standing on what is absolutely right. And I'm going to also do a shameless plug in my last 16 seconds. I've been fighting for virtual access in the courts for a very, very long time. And this is one of the reasons why I have seen people shackled to a bed and had a video camera shoved in their face and had to go to court when they wanted to send them away. Can we not? Can we not? Stand up and do it for, for d diplomatic reasons, can we not? We can do better, Prince George's County. I believe in us. Thank you.